Good evening and welcome to Hard Fire. I'm your host, Joseph Dobrian, and we are here for another half hour of discussion of current political and other events from a libertarian perspective. Tonight, I've got a couple of guests who are going to help me discuss the um, Republican presidential nomination, um, what I would call the extraordinarily premature nomination campaign for um, in the Republican Party. Um, with me are, first of all, Rosemarie Markgraf, the Re Republican district leader of the 52nd Assembly District here in Brooklyn, and a member of the New York Republican State Committee, a supporter of Rudolph Giuliani for President of the United States. With me also is Dr. Avery Knapp, a supporter of Texas Congressman Ron Paul for President of the United States. And um, I'm going to ask you to start, Ms. Markgraf, by um, telling us uh, as briefly and succinctly as you can, what does former Mayor Giuliani stand for and why should he be pre president in preference to any of the other candidates? First of all, I, you know, I think that is, I don't know if it's fair being the only Republican surrounded by you two libertarians, but I think this is a time in our history when we really need someone who's a strong leader, when we need someone we can respect. I think historians uh, will all agree that we were fortunate to have Roosevelt, yes, a Democrat, in World War II, but his leadership was recognized. I think that Giuliani has proven that he can govern. He, when he took over New York City, people were afraid to come here because the crime rate was so high. Uh, there, the, the, the theory was that New York City was not governable, and Giuliani showed that he was a leader and took over. And because he has a proven record is why I'm really thoroughly rooting for him. Okay, thanks very much. And Dr. Knapp, maybe you can tell me why you, well, tell us what Ron Paul stands for and then tell me why you think he's the best man for the Republican nomination. Ron Paul today is the leading advocate for freedom in America. He believes in the Constitution and following the Constitution, unlike many of the Republicans and uh, particularly the Democrats. Uh, he wants to return to sound monetary principles. He wants to lower taxes. And he doesn't just uh, uh, rhetorically talk about these things, but he's done it for 10 terms uh, in, co in Congress uh, in Texas. Um, he's the leading advocate for the Constitution today. Um, he wants, uh, he believes in states' rights and that anything that's not expressly, auth uh, expressly authorized by the Constitution should be delegated to states and local government, um, local rule. Um, this is what we need today. Uh, you know, the size of the government is tr is, uh, has increased tremendously over the past uh, 100 years. Uh, and particularly even since Bush. You know, Bush talks about the uh, rhetorical um, uh, policy of limited government, but, uh, you know, compassionate conservatism. But when you look at what they've actually done, these Republicans, such as Giuliani, would, uh, <coughs> uh, they've done nothing but increase the size of government. Okay, now maybe you can answer me this. I hear that uh, from several people that uh, Ron Paul stands for the Constitution, and I guess implicit in that is the idea that other candidates don't. Can you tell me how he stands for the Constitution more than, say, Mr. Giuliani or Mr. McCain well, or... Well, that, that's easy. We'll start with the First Amendment uh, to the Bill of Rights. First Amendment talks about free speech, that people have a right to political speech. Uh, Giuliani limited this in a number of ways when he was uh, mayor here in New York City. He sta uh, Giuliani stands for McCain-Feingold Finance Reform Law, basically federal regulation of political speech in America. I, if I, I, I'm a physician, I'm just a resident, I don't earn that much money, but if I did, if I want to donate $2,301 to Ron Paul or Giuliani or any candidate, I can't do that under McCain-Feingold. Uh, I can donate 2300 and that's the limit. Limits political speech in America. I don't understand how the Supreme Court upheld this. Uh, I believe this limits political speech. You should not have the government regulating political speech. Uh, the Second Amendment, uh, gun control, uh, uh, the right to, uh, to bear arms is expressly authorized in the Bill of Rights. But uh, Giuliani is in favor of a national database of all gun own, hand, handgun owners in America. Uh, I think it's uh, horrendous. Our founding fathers never would have stood for it, uh, and Ron Paul will not stand for that. Okay. Um, now, implicit in uh, Dr. Knapp's remarks, uh, I think, is the idea that uh, ex-Mayor Giuliani is not uh, a great supporter of the Constitution. Will you agree with that, or do you refute it? I can't possibly agree with that. I think Mayor Giuliani, mayor of America, is very much a constructionist. And I think that when it would, would come to appointing people to the Supreme Court, he would appoint other constructionists because he does believe in the Constitution. Well, then how does he, how do you explain his support of McCain-Feingold? How, first of all, I want to disagree with you. You know that 
people, uh, li limited liability companies, etc. So the individual can't contribute this great amount of money, but we still have a lot of, of, of money that can be gotten on the, uh, but the finance that, But you're not answering my question. Why, how do you square his support of McCain-Feingold with his supposed support of the Constitution? Oh, you know, I think that uh, you can support parts of that with, and still be a constructionist. I really do. Okay, so he supports parts of the Constitution. No, he supports all of the Constitution. Oh. But parts of the McCain fine goal. Now, don't change my wording, okay? I'm not changing your wording at all. I'm letting your wording stand okay. and let it fall of its own weight. Okay. The, the argument that too much money is in the political process, I don't know if you know this, but in 2004 election, more money was spent on Easter candy that year than the, pres than the uh, presidential uh, uh, campaign for, uh, for, for President of America, the leader of the free world. More money was spent on Easter candy that, that year. That doesn't really strike me as a relevant argument, but let's get back to the question of the uh, presidential nomination. Now, um, I'm going to play devil's advocate. I'm somewhat sympathetic to Ron Paul. But I'm saying tiny winged gorillas are going to fly out my butt before the Republicans nominate him. So um, what do you have to say to that? Uh, well, a couple of things. One, in 1964, the Republican Party nominated Barry Goldwater. And it's argued, at least, uh, that Barry Goldwater shifted policy in the Republican Party towards co a constitutional uh, principles, towards limited government. And you saw that in 19, uh, 1980 with the election of Ronald Reagan. Uh, in 1976, Ron, uh, Ron Paul was one of only four or five a congressman who endorsed uh, uh, Ronald Reagan for presidency. Um, the Republican Party has a history of being non-interventionist and being for a limited government since, at least since uh, Barry Goldwater. And com compare that to Giuliani, who's in favor of, again, regu political regulate, federal regulation of political free speech and uh, gun control. There is no way... I'm, I'm asking, though, sure. about uh, Ron Paul's chances to be nominated and uh, why he should let's, be nominated. Let's talk about his chances. He has a tremendous uh, support over the internet. Remember Howard Dean in 2004? I would argue that Howard Dean had a good chance to be nominated. Uh, scary for a Republican or a liberty-minded person, but uh, nonetheless uh, had a good chance because of a groundswell of internet support. And Ron Paul has that. He came in second in the Fox News poll uh, after the second debate. He had, he's the most number of subscribers on MySpace, uh, second for Republicans, pardon me, uh, YouTube, uh, Meetup. He has a tremendous uh, uh, support, a uh, loyal following of, um, of uh, young people and old people alike who are, uh, are in favor of uh, the Constitution and uh, limited government. Okay. Uh, now, I also have uh, a few doubts about uh, Rudy Giuliani's ability to actually get the uh, Republican nomination. My own feeling is that his personal life won't stand scrutiny, that it will be... Uh, torn apart by the more, uh, shall we say, social conservative element of the Republican Party who will not like his two divorces and the rumors of extramarital affairs and so forth. Do you think that his personal life can, can stand scrutiny? I think that in the year 2007 that his personal life can withstand some scrutiny. I think that, I like to think that most of us realize that the personal, his personal life really doesn't doesn't, does not affect his ability to run a city, to run a government. I hope that the, let's, let's be realistic, I hope that the religious right doesn't get too vociferous in their complaints, because if we look into their personal life, you know, there's a lot of scandal there too. So, to make my long-winded story uh, a little shorter, I, I think that it's possible now that that he that this could be overcome. Gosh, I remember the scandals that over Rockefeller's divorce. Oh, good grief! We've come a long way. Okay, but uh, now this uh, particular TV program is geared more towards libertarian viewers. So maybe you can tell us why should libertarians support Rudolf Giuliani? Why should libertarians support Giuliani? Well, for one thing, as I said, he's a proven leader, and also you know I think that we have to work together. We stand for many of the same things. We stand for lower taxes. We stand for smaller government. We really do. And so I think we have to select somebody who can be a winner. Uh, I think that really, how did, how did uh, Ron Paul get publicity? He, big deal. He challenged Giuliani to a debate. It was very clever. I mean, if, come on, if I were running as an unknown and you were a known, I might do the same thing. But that wouldn't make me qualified to be president or, or make enough people, you know, I. I said, good for him, but uh, he's not getting he's not getting that debate that he wanted. So I, I don't think, you know, sometimes I say that Republicans are their own worst enemy. 
because we sometimes select somebody who can't win or we, or we overload the field. And I think that sometimes by not working together, that we together are we're a combination of our own worst enemies. Okay. Now there is one issue on which, to my mind, Giuliani is a little bit more libertarian than Ron Paul, and that is the subject of abortion, on which Giuliani is pro-choice, at least to some extent, and Ron Paul is basically pro-life. Dr. Knapp, how do you justify Ron Paul's pro-life position as a libertarian? Well, with all due respect, I actually disagree vehemently that, uh, that uh, uh, Mayor Giuliani, former Mayor Giuliani, is more uh, of a libertarian on this issue. Um, there's a part, there's a split in the libertarian uh, movement, uh, the pro-freedom movement, whether or not uh, people have a right to life or people have a right to choice. Um, and it's a difficult issue. Um, Giuliani, however, is in favor of federal funding, the government, the federal government funding abortions. I don't believe any libertarian is in favor of that. Furthermore, Ron Paul's stance is basically that when uh, nowhere it, uh, it, it, in the Constitution is it, uh, it's not a constitutional issue, frankly. It's a state's rights issue. States should be able to decide whether or not uh, to um, prosecute uh, uh, murderers or criminals uh, of any sort. The only federal crimes are treason, um, tax evasion, al although that's arguable, and um, uh, counterfeiting, uh, counterfeiting. Okay. Now, uh, to go to the question of states' rights that you brought up, now, a lot of people still think that um, the phrase states' rights is just code for racism. And there have been accusations of racism leveled at Ron Paul over the years. Uh, what do you and his other supporters have to say to that? Uh, I think it's basically nonsense. Uh, you know, there's some rumor out there that he wrote, uh, it wasn't him, uh, a newsletter of his had some, you know, objectionable material in it. Uh, supposedly, this is a man, this is an honest man. Ron Paul is an honest man. I truly believe this. Uh, uh, he says that he did not write this. He says he didn't see it. He said he did not approve it. He certainly would not approve it. You know, uh, I've yet, nonetheless, it was, uh, it, you know, he did say some objectionable things, mm -hmm. and I think it's a non-issue, frankly. Well, I've heard that explanation also, yeah. and I'm saying, okay, I'm glad he's taking responsibility for it, but if that was published under the Ron Paul report, under his name, and he didn't read it and approve it before it went out, am I supposed to trust this guy with the presidency of the United States? Um, that's a, it's a good question. Uh, it was written 10 or 20 years ago. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. Um, the statements that were made, just because he's in some obscure newsletter that no one really even, ha even has a copy of anymore. Uh, uh, I don't care how, ex how uh, obscure the newsletter it was, there were still some pretty nasty racist comments. Um, well, they were, they were objectionable, but uh, again, he didn't write them. He's not, he's not responsible for them directly. They did not come out of his, his mouth. You know, you're, you're, a, news, you're a news, uh, uh, a writer. If someone, um, uh, write something that says, oh, well, you would think this, uh, or if you publish a, a, an essay or publish a, a, a news bulletin and someone writes uh, something under it that you didn't see before it was written uh, and it went out, uh, are you responsible for it, or is well, the author of I'm that in, responsible? No, I'm in the public relations business okay. also, <laughs> and uh, nothing goes out without the client's approval. Okay. And I would never dream of sending anything out without the client's approval, and no client of mine would dream of letting me. I think it's, I think it's a non-issue. Okay, um, now um, let's let let's, me, let me let's finish. listen to you about. Uh, Ron, pardon me, to interrupt again, but uh, Ron Paul actually has a tremendous uh, diversity of supporters. I mean, you know, uh, uh, I'm sure that Mayor Giuliani does as well. But uh, you know, everyone who's liberty-minded is in favor of Ron Paul. I, I'm not. I'm not questioning that. I'm just questioning his judgment and his common sense. But uh, let's go to you now about the point that Dr. Knapp made about uh, federal funding for abortion. Um, Mayor Giuliani is uh, in favor of public funding for abortion, at least to some degree, uh, and libertarians are not going to take kindly to that. How do you explain that? The only way that I can explain any of Giuliani's beliefs and what he'll do in government is by, you know, paraphrasing what he says. That he admits that he's in favor of women, right, personally, so therefore he's in favor of funding for abortions. He admits this, but he points out very strongly and very distinctly that what he believes personally will not affect the way the law states that it has to be. So if the law is the law is the law, and he said, you know, takes me back to the time when Kennedy was running. Boy, am I dating myself. When, I was around then, too. Okay, when Kennedy was running. Do you remember all that about the Catholic religion would interfere with his 
governing, and it didn't, and he proved it for once and for all that religion beliefs didn't have to influence government, that there is a worthwhile and there is an enforceable separation of ch yeah. church and state. I don't think anybody is worried about uh, Giuliani's Catholicism getting in the way. No. Um, but but uh, I, do, I do think that uh, I have the same objection to him that I have to Ron Paul, which is that I question his judgment and his good sense, and I'll tell you why. Because he was having a little uh, colloquy with Ron Paul uh, on a televised debate a few weeks ago. Ron Paul made the statement to the effect of the reason 9-11 happened basically was because we're over there. And I'm saying, well, yes, that's true. It wasn't moral de morally defensible what those people did, but still that's probably why they did it. Meanwhile, your, your, your man Giuliani got his panties all in a twist and was saying how, to the effect of how dare you say that, Congressman Paul, withdraw it immediately, what a horrible thing to have said. Now that struck me as just plain stupid. Well, it didn't strike me as stupid, and I'll tell you why. If I came into this room, okay, I'm an American, and I'm proud of it. Now, you two, let's say that you were militant Islamic people, all right? You could kill me right on the spot because I'm not of your religion, all right? So, in other words, I think we are at war, number one. I think we've got to recognize that we're at war with the militant Islamists, all right? But when... Uh, we, we must remember that before 9-11 came the attack on in, uh, also in the World Trade area. Remember the garage incident where we had, where we had the uh, Islamic? Well, but, uh, so, so I don't think just because we were there, we, just because we have interest in the Middle East doesn't have a thing. The, well, then why did they blow up the World Trade Center, please? Come on. If you read the Islamic, you know... Because I, they envy us our hamburgers and our Barbie no, dolls? No, they don't, don't, they, they so. don't necessarily, but come on. We're not militant Islamic, we're of a different religion. We li why have religious wars gone on all throughout history? Basically, that's what this is, a religious war. Yes, but if we were keeping to ourselves and not sending troops and airplanes over to the Middle East, you really think they'd have knocked down the World Trade Center? Yes, it, yes, I do. We, come on, we didn't... Uh, it's funny they haven't tried to blow up any public buildings in Moscow. Well, in well, any case, um, uh, I, I have no <laughs> comment on that. Okay. Now, let me ask you, Dr. Knapp, uh, with regard to Ron Paul's future plans, as I said, I am very, very skeptical that he can be nominated by the Republicans. If he's not, will he be running as a libertarian? Uh, he's, I believe he stated that no, no uh, he wouldn't. Uh, he would have a hard time endorsing any of these Republicans' pro-war stance. Um, they spent $700 billion on this war in Iraq. That's two thousand, approximately $2,000 for every man, woman, child in America. 3,500 uh, American lives were lost. Something like 600,000 Iraqi lives were lost. It's done nothing but bring, um, um, it's a stain uh, arguably on the American flag. Uh, it's, uh, it's difficult to reconcile a, a pro-war stance, and I do not see how any um, Republican could possibly win the general nomination uh, in 2008 uh, with a pro-war stance. That, therefore, I think Ron Paul has the best chance. I mean, look at this. There was an Iowa uh, poll, 52% of Republicans in Iowa, Iowa Republicans, stated that uh, they want us out of Iraq within six months compared to 39%. There's a tremendous amount of support for the uh, pro-freedom and pro uh, uh, anti-intervention uh, movement in America. Okay. And what is um, Mayor Giuliani's stance on the war, and um, what do you think of it, and why do you believe it's the right one if you do? Let's take my opinion first. At the time, if I had been in Washington and gotten the incorrect information from the CIA, I would have accepted it. You know, there was an interesting story. Uh, Colin Powell, when he had to make that speech at the UN, uh, had the same opinion that I think I would have had that if I'd have gotten this information from a source and he did his homework, I would have believed it. And so I would have, I would have thought it was the time, just as all our Congress people did think it was the time. I think, though, I'll be very honest with my personal opinion, that even though I would have thought it was time to go, that I don't think ever that the U.S. should have been, that we should be in a situation where all we're doing is monitoring a civil war. Uh, so I think that we have to we have to change course i don't think you see i do not but has has mayor giuliani laid out a um, a prospective policy a, a way that he is going to resolve the war one way or the other or prosecute it or not prosecute it oh well he isn't going to drop out immediately because if he dropped out immediately there'd be total chaos in 
in uh, the in Iraq especially but throughout the entire well Iran Pakistan uh, I haven't I don't have a, a point by point breakdown of how he's going to do it but I do know that he he certainly wants it to come to an end but he doesn't want this sudden exodus because that would be fatal he okay. believes now by contrast uh, what was Ron Paul's strategy be for um, resolving the war one way or the other? What would he do? Ron Paul would pull our troops out to safety, uh, promote the national defense, not offense, not, monitor, not be there to monitor a civil war, uh, save the money, save the American lives, save the Iraqi lives. Would he pull we them have out no immediately or would he do he it would. He, Well, he would, uh, you know, uh, safely, obviously. Uh, he, the, the, the primary responsibility is to protect the troops. Uh, he would pull out the troops in a safe manner immediately. Um, uh, so that no man is left in Iraq. Uh, unlike uh, the Democrats or the Repu or, or all nine of the Republicans want to keep uh, American troops there. There's, they're building, a, a, I think, a billion dollar embassy it is in, in, in Iraq right now. I mean, there are long term plans for us to stay there in Iraq, spending money and uh, losing U.S. soldiers. And Ron Paul wants us out. Okay, and on another issue, that the general issue of public spending. Uh, I recall that on uh, Ron Paul's website, he um, tells a a not too well known story about Congressman Davy Crockett and uh, how um, Congressman Crockett's eyes were opened to what is the correct view in his mind on public spending. Can you give us very briefly uh, what that story was and uh, whether it jibes with what Ron Paul stands for? I actually read it not too long ago. The basic story is that there's a fire that happens in a rich area in uh, Washington, D.C. Um, lobbyists go to Congress, they want $20,000 to rebuild the homes. Uh, Davy Crockett uh, votes in favor of it. He uh, goes to meet a farmer saying, hey, you know, you raised my taxes, who, who was not part of the homes that were lost. Uh, uh, he said, hey, you raised my taxes in order for us to pay for this, these, you know, these rich people's homes back. Um, you're basically taking from me and giving to someone else. You're depriving me of my right to property, uh, which is uh, God-given. Um, and David Crockett uh, says, you know what, you're basically, that you're right, uh, you know, I apologize. I'm going to make sure that uh, these collectivist policies of taking from everyone and giving to certain special interest groups, I mean, that's why we have lobbyists today, is right. because, uh, because the Washington bureaucrats dole out money. Right. Ron Paul has never voted to dole out money, never taken a, a congressional yes. junket, and consistently voted to lower taxes and spending. That is one of the great principles of the uh, Libertarian story. Party, that... Um, that one is not to be taxed without one's own consent, that taxation is theft. I don't think Rudy Giuliani feels that way, does he, or does well, he? Well, I'm proud to tell you that during his eight-year tenure as mayor, that taxes in New York City were reduced 23 times. They saved the people a total of a couple billion, uh, $8 billion, as I believe. But I am sure about the 23 times they reduced taxes, and that's what he firmly believes in. Here's some more facts. Giuliani supported, uh, opposed Pataki's uh, uh, tax decrease. He increased spending in New York City by 2.84%. Uh, uh, he's a big government conservative, not, not a freedom-minded, uh, uh, libertarian-principled uh, conservative. Uh, Giuliani does not intend to eliminate taxation, no. does he? Okay. No. Um, and um, another question I have, um, does uh, Giuliani uh, favor conscription for, um, to uh, bring more troops into Iraq if necessary? I really don't know. I did not ask. Remember, I'm not a member of his campaign, and right. I did not ask that. And I don't. I don't recall. Do we? Do you know what? If the public asked that, I don't know. Okay. I don't know about Giuliani, but I know that Ron Paul is vehemently opposed to a draft. He believes it's a it's a uh, depriving one of one's right to life, liberty, and property. Okay. Um, now maybe um, Ms. Uh, Markgraf, you can tell me what are the differences between um, Mayor Giuliani and some of the leading Democratic candidates. I see him as more of a conservative Democrat than as a uh, Republican. Maybe you can set me straight on that. Well, I think that there's room in the Republican Party for everyone. I, I remember running for office and calling myself a progressive Republican, OK? Uh, there are very many similarities, but I think that Mayor Giuliani has consistently been for lower taxes for less government. I think that consistently he has realized that terrorism is a major threat to the United States and therefore uh, although he's not living in the past he is living for the future and will continue I think just as he just as he succeeded in, in keeping New York 
New Yorkers safe by having the crime rate reduced. I think he has a desire to keep all U.S. citizens safe by keeping up the fight against terror. Okay. And I have a similar question for you, Dr. Knapp, and that is if Ron Paul is so all-fired libertarian, what is he uh, doing uh, playing in the sandbox with a bunch of, uh, as you call them, big government conservatives, Republicans who are in fact statist and authoritarian and maybe just as bad as the Democrats? I'll tell you this, the Republican Party has not always stood for big government, big bureaucracy, and big wars. Uh, look back to Ronald Reagan. Uh, and his uh, rhetoric to cut taxes and cut uh, government spending. You know, his line about I'm the scariest words in the English language or the scariest 14 words. I remember are, his rhetoric, but he didn't really shrink the government. No, that's true. But I'll tell you, if Barry Goldwater had won, he would have. And uh, Ron Paul is a Barry Goldwater conservative, and he's, uh, he stands for the rhetoric behind Ronald Reagan's uh, presidency. Okay. Uh, so I'm curious, who do you think each of you, the Democrats, are going to nominate? Or rather, should I say, which Democrat are you most afraid of? We'll start with you, Dr. Knapp. Uh, I don't know who they're going to elect. It will be a socialist, though. Uh, socialist light, perhaps. The Democratic Party today stands for bigger government. Uh, a lot of them want to keep troops in Iraq. They say they don't, but they want to keep the embassy there. They want to make sure that we're there to train the police force. They're not true non-interventionists the way uh, Ron Paul is. Um, uh, I think that Ron Paul has a very good chance. The gambling sites, uh, you know, that uh, no, give I'm, odds I'm on these things. I'm asking you uh, who your uh, least favorite Democrat is. Oh, the least favorite is. Democrat? Uh, you know, frankly, I don't know that much about the Democratic uh, candidates right now. I'll tell you, Mike Gravel is an interesting candidate. Uh, in he, he he's got as, mu about as much he, chance as Ron Paul. I think well, Ms. Mark Gravel, I'm going to ask you the same question. Who do you think is, who's the Democrat that you fear the most? The Democrat I fear the most is Hillary Clinton. She's got her husband, her, yeah, he's still her husband behind her, and he is a real political pro. I really, and she can adapt. You know, she really, she right now she's a bit Westerner as I am, and but she's but in that the big old southern accent of hers in the all south. Of a then that southern <laughs> accent, and she's she's back home where she belongs. She can change oh, that personality. She could be one well, thing to us Midwesterners and, and another thing. She's a chameleon, thing. all right. And I think on we that can... note, we're going to have to wrap it up. But I want to thank you both very much for coming in. This was most enlightening. Rosemary Markgraf, Giuliani supporter, Dr. Avery Knapp, Ron Paul supporter. Thank you all for watching. I'm Joseph Dobrian. We'll be back soon with another edition of Hard Phone.